Hello, I'm Dr. Treitz from New Leaf Health and Wellness. You've now started our acupuncture program or are interested in doing it. So the big question we get is, what is acupuncture? Well, acupuncture is a misnomer. Everybody think you're supposed to be penetrated or punctured with some sort of needle. Well, that's only one way to stimulate an acupuncture point. There are actually 33. The purpose of acupuncture is to achieve balance. And these balance come by way of these things called acupuncture points. Acupuncture points have been scientifically validated that they exist. Unfortunately, the people that were volunteered to be scientifically validated took on a ridiculous amount of radiation and then the acupuncture points lit up as was thought by the Chinese and the Japanese and the, uh, the ancients of acupuncture years ago. They do exist. I don't suggest anybody do a radiation treatment to prove acupuncture. What we do know is that there is less skin resistance on the acupuncture points. And there is a way to measure skin resistance on acupuncture points. Traditionally, chi our chiropractors and acupuncturists are doing the same thing for years. In fact, acupuncture has been around for about 7,000 years. Acupuncturists performed twina, or what's considered a chiropractic adjustment following most acupuncture treatments. Today, Regardless of the type of chiropractor, when they're stimulating a mechanoreceptor point in a joint, they're doing acupuncture. So they are together. Sometimes we need to provide acupuncture or to treat a specific acupuncture point to achieve balance. And how does this work? Well, there are 12 meridians, or what's considered main meridians, or energy vessels that travel through the body. In our office, we measure these vessels by a device called an AcuGraph. There are actually 71 known meridians, but the other ones are considered secondary. That doesn't mean in your course of treatment we don't treat those acupuncture points or within those meridians. It just means that they aren't diagnostic. When I was in chiropractic school, the only device that was out there was one that was running off of MS-DOS. And this is in 2000. And I said to my friend, who I was sitting next to in acupuncture class, I said, wouldn't it be awesome if somebody made this on Windows or a Mac device? And he said, it sure would. And within the year, he had his grant from the National Institutes of Health, and he created a company known as MeridiaTech, and that's who makes our AccuGraph. The beauty in the AccuGraph is, if I need to really learn acupuncture, I really must move to China, and I really need to stay there for 20 years. You don't get to be the high-end doctor that does the assessment and does the treatment in China until you've been there for 20 years. That's 20 years of school. I already have 20 years of school. I don't need 20 more years of school. The AccuGraph allows us to adequately, precisely correlate those diagnostic acupuncture points on those 12 meridians and find out what we need to do to get you back into balance. Now, if you're doing genetics or you're just part of our functional medicine program or you're doing shape, Sometimes there's a system that's out of balance and needs to be helped, or we need to move energy from one point to the other. There's a law of this called the second law of thermodynamics. Energy is not created or destroyed, it's just moved. And that's what we're doing in acupuncture, is we're moving the energy from one point to the other so that we have balance, so that we can get the result that we need. Now, the history of acupuncture, it really began, and most people think it's China, it actually began in India. Then the Chinese were the first to pub have a publication out, and that was about 200 BC. In about 1500 AD, the Egyptians started publicizing or writing about what they were doing. In fact, that's where what's called ear therapy or auricular therapy came from. It was the Egyptian pirates who started putting earrings into a certain part on their ear, gold and not silver, so they could see further on the sea, because gold tonifies silver sedates. So in acupuncture, they might put a silver point or a silver needle onto an acupuncture point to sedate or bring the energy down. Likewise, you might use a gold uh, needle or what's called a seed to bring the energy up. In our office, we do use needles, but we often use lasers. Why? The particular needles that we use and the laser we use when we put it on the point also tonifies and sedates. So it's whatever the acupuncture point needs. Now, when we do an AccuGraph, when we get these particular uh, diagnostic information from you, 
we give you the points to go home and we give you a device called a Taishin. It's essentially a plunger that you get to put on these acupuncture points so that you can achieve your balance from home. We want you to do that because you can do it and it saves you a lot of money as opposed to coming back in for acupuncture two or three times a week. We can have you monitor this while we're doing our other processes in the office, get you to that balance point so that we can move on. So let me give you a history of acupuncture. In 1826 was about the first time the Chinese started moving to the United States. Why? To help build the railroads. In 1917, the first acupuncture school was developed. And in 1933, there was an incorporation which was called traditional Chinese medicine or what's called TCM. Now there are multiple types of acupuncture. The Chinese have their form. The Japanese have a different form, which is really called five element. You may have heard of five element, fire, earth, metal, water, wind. Now, on these elements, let's say, for instance, um, water, the energy systems of what's called the bladder and the kidney, which does kind of make sense, what they might move some water back and forth, are on the five elements. And in five element, we have what's called yin or yin, and those are considered female or dark colored and all of those organs are solid. So if I'm looking at, let's say, the difference between a heart and a bladder, my heart is very solid. Solid is in, and that's considered a yin organ. If it's hollow, like a bladder or an intestine, it's considered hollow. Hollow is considered yan or yang. Some people, uh, the, the G is actually silent. And that has to do with male. So in any aspect, Women have more estrogen and progesterone than testosterone, but they have a little bit of testosterone. Men have more testosterone, but they have a little bit of estrogen and progesterone. That's called yin-yang. That's where our balance comes in. That's the difference. So you can't get away from everything and be over here. You have to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's balance. So moving on with the history. In 1961, kinesiology was developed by a Dr. George Goodhart. And he was doing that as a chiropractor because he realized that acupuncture and chiropractic were indeed together. So he was using muscle tests to find out what acupuncture points needed to be stimulated. In 1973, President Nixon went to China. And the story goes, he needed to have an emergency appendectomy. They did it with needles. They didn't use any anesthetics, just needles. So that was kind of a big what are they doing over there? You can use needles on these acupuncture points. And if you remember anything about mechanoreceptor stimulation, what's called pain patterns on nociception, President Nixon had nociception in his appendix. Ouch. It was going to his brain. They stuck in needles into the acupuncture points that have mechanoreceptors to the brain to dampen the pain response so that he could do surgery without anesthesia. That's what acupuncture is. In 1970 Four, the International Association of Medical Acupuncture was developed. And in 1995, the FDA approved acupuncture as safe and effective. In 1997, the National Institutes of Health opened up all the research for acupuncture. And now there are 41 acupuncture schools in the United States, most of them using a device known as AccuGraph. I was blessed to go to Meridian, Idaho for a while and work with the developer of AccuGraph. And this is also the developer of the company that we have for our master stem microcurrent that we use in our office, also by Meridia Tech. So we're using frequencies to evaluate mechanoreceptor stimulation. When you get your acrograph, you go home and you start your points. We go over those points in the office. When you follow up, it could be two weeks, three weeks, a month, or even a little longer than that. We want to make sure that you are achieving balance and your energy is coming up. So. In our world, remember, there is Indian acupuncture, Chinese acupuncture, Japanese acupuncture, Korean hand acupuncture, auriculotherapy, British acupuncture. You better learn a little bit of all of it because they all have a benefit. So the benefit of the AccuGraph is that it incorporates all of that. So if somebody walks into our office and say, you know what, doc, at 1 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon I have no energy, or I wake up at 3 o'clock at night, that falls more into the acupuncture cycle than it does in standard physiology. That doesn't mean we're not going to look at your physiology, but that allows us with mechanoreceptor stimulation getting to that time of day and see what's really happening at that time of day. How acupuncture works is there's this thing in the universe called chi, and it's spelled Q-I, but it's pronounced chi. 
Chi comes in from the universe into these things called chakras. Chakras then go into the meridians. The meridians go into the nervous system, and then out it goes from there. So we really need to evaluate the chemistry in the nervous system as well as the acupuncture system to get balance. So just to recap, Chinese have been doing chiropractic for thousands of years. Chiropractors have, doing, have been doing acupuncture for about 120 years. They go together. So the way that we stimulate an acupuncture point, again, there are 33 ways that we know of. We could tap a point with my finger. I could put a laser on it. I could put a needle on it. I could cup it. If you ever watch the Olympics, these athletes come out with all these cupping devices. They're actually moving chi and blood and stagnation and all that fun stuff around. But that's by way of the acupuncture system. I can even put a mirror on it. And I can even do traditional chiropractic because chiropractic is acupuncture. So many ways to stimulate a point. If one doesn't work or we're not seeing the movement, we have other options. So the question is, well, I can't see the acupuncture points. Uh, that's true. But you also can't see your cell phone text messages as they come into their phone, but you certainly believe that they exist. And the next question is, is, well, I don't see how you can tell me something and change my physiology. Well, that's okay that you don't believe it. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh, for instance, every single marketing agency knows how to make a suggestion, especially in the food industry, make a picture of something and make you go, hmm, I think I want to eat that. That's changing your physiology. For instance, let's do a story. I did this with a group of um, medical doctors who said, I don't believe you can suggest and change physiology just by communication, which is the premise of acupuncture. We're moving energy. So I said, okay, let's remember the hottest day of the summer. Most people have a very hot day in their state. The hottest day of the summer and you're dehydrated. You know you need to go get something to drink, but you don't have anything. And it's getting really hard and you're getting kind of nervous. Hey, I really need something to drink. My mouth's getting dry and I'm getting caught in mouth and all these things that are going with me. I come by with a lemon. I said, tell you what, I'm going to cut this lemon in half and I'm going to make you wait for it, maybe another 20 or 30 minutes. And as I take this lemon, I'm going to gently squeeze this lemon one drop onto the tip of your lips. Most people by now have some salivation going on. Did I give you a lemon? We made a suggestion. We had a thought. Remember, thought is energy. Thought is physiology. It's not necessarily real. I don't have a lemon for you. But we changed your physiology called salivation. We're now affecting your digestive system. With acupuncture, it's our job to achieve balance. So if there's dead tissue, there's no energy going there. The good part about you is when there's live tissue, there's hope. I'm Dr. Trites with New Leaf Health and Wellness. Be well.